All right, so carrying on with the Rx Java and Rx Android for Beginners course, next is the operators. So this is this is meant to be an introduction to operators, uh, what they are, what they're commonly used for, what they're good for, why you should know about them. Basically, is what this is. And uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go down to the article, the Rx Java operators article. <laughs> article, I said that weird from my website. And uh, we're gonna go down to the introduction here, where it says, "What is the purpose of an operator?" And an operator, I'm just going to read it straight from the article here. The purpose of an operator is to take a given data set and transform it into an observable data set. So that's one purpose. Uh, another purpose is some op operators also manipulate the data objects and transform them further or do, do more things to them, basically. So <clears throat> the takeaway here is that uh, operators will take, uh, they have different jobs that they do. They take data sets, they take data, they take objects. They can transform them into observable objects, and they can also manipulate them further and do certain things with them. So just, uh, you know, comparable to a math operator, if you're taking any kind of math in school or you're familiar with any kind of math operators, same kind of thing. You apply them to numbers and you get results from them. Uh, these operators you apply to objects or other observables and you get different results from them. So um, actually the example that I'm, that I'm planning on going through in this article I already went through in the introduction to observables and observers lecture. So uh, if you watch that, you're already gonna be familiar with this, but uh, I'm still gonna talk a little bit more about them here. So if we come down into the types of operators section, I have a couple other options here. So or, or a couple other headings here. We have different kind of categories of observables and uh, the names of the observables are characterized by the things they do or, or uh, yeah, the operations they perform. So here's an example of some observable, some operators that are responsible for creating observables. So taking an object and then producing an observable object. Uh, you, you should already be familiar with the from iterable operator, which is the one that we looked at in the uh, introduction to observables and observers lecture. Uh, but there's also some more here. There's create, uh, from array, just, range, repeat. There's a, there, and there's there's a couple more too, but I didn't include them all here. Uh, in general though, what they do is you, you apply them uh, and uh, they take a, a data set or an object and convert it into an observable, so they create an observable. Another category is for filtering and sorting. So that's like, uh, I believe also in this lecture, the introduction to observables and observers, I applied a filter, so a filter operator, to the data set, and then it's uh, filtered out the tasks that were complete. So that's uh, that's an example of a filter. What it's doing is it's it's not creating observables, but it's uh, filtering a data set of observables. <clears throat> so uh, just uh, you know, like applying a math operation to something, uh, think of like greater than or less than. That would be a math operation determining. Uh, which numbers are greater than or less than other numbers. So that's kind of what these, that's this category, filtering and sorting. Another uh, category is transforming emitted data into other types. So this is, um, it's kind of, it's almost like taking a step further from creating observables, which is this category. You're, you're taking things that are already observables, but you're transforming them or combining them or adding different properties to them. Um, so that's those are kind of the more complicated, more advanced operators, which we're going to take a take a look at in, at the uh, towards the end of this course. So now let's let's jump into Android Studio and let's take a look at the example. This just kind of as a warning, this is the same one I went over in the introduction to observables and observers lecture, but uh, but we're going to just kind of go through it quickly anyway. Uh, I actually already have the code written out because it was already on here. So I'm creating a observable, an observable task object. Uh, the task class is here as a description an is complete boolean a priority just a plain old Java object with some properties one's a string one's a boolean one's an integer uh, the other class I have is this data source class where I create a bunch of new task objects and add them to an array list and then return that array list then in uh, main activity is where I create an observable from that list so I'm using the from iterable operator I'm uh, creating uh, an array list of those uh, tasks, I'm subscribing on the background thread using schedulers or schedulers.io, and then I'm applying a filter, which is another operator, to then uh, filter certain tasks out. And originally, I was also sleeping the thread, but I'm going to get rid of that. 
And uh, so basically what this is gonna do, this filter, is every task that is in the list will have this kind of check performed to it. So it's saying if the task is complete, uh, return true to this test method. And if it returns true, then those tasks will get passed to the observers. So then down here we have our, our observable, we have a, an observer subscribing to that observable. And then in the on next method is where those task objects are gonna be made available. And the only ones that are gonna be available are the ones that pass the test. The task is complete test basically. So remember they have this is complete Boolean. If that Boolean is true, then they get passed to the observers. And that's sort of, a, that's a very simple example of how to use two operators. One is doing work on a background thread. So the filter is being applied on a background thread because it's being called right after the subscribe on method with the schedulers.io. And then the, uh, the observers are observing the results on the main thread because we have that parameter passed right here to the observe on property. So that's, uh, that's gonna be it. Not much of an exciting example. I know we already went, went through it, but in the next video, we are gonna start getting into the really exciting stuff, which is a kind of deep diving into the operators. And the next one's gonna be just, range, and repeat. So those three operators.